we can't expect the cost of energy to be any less in the future in rural Alaska than it is right now, and it's too expensive. So that means that whatever we do in the way of replacement housing or renovation or repair on homes that have been damaged, we really have to deal with energy efficiency because folks literally aren't going to be able to live in these homes unless we reduce the amount of energy that they use. In room with a wood stove over in that direction and two bedrooms on this side. So one bedroom here, two bedrooms here. And then this is a deck six foot by yeah, 21 feet. Nice! Stairs going up. When the culvert went out by the bridge, the water couldn't get through there fast enough. And my house is in a position where I had a, like a swamp behind it. And when the water couldn't get through the culvert fast enough, it came in over the road. So when all that water came in, and the flood ended, there was nowhere for that water to go. And my house sat in water for six weeks. Um, I did come back two weeks after the flood happened, and I put on hip boots, and it got up just below the, the bottom for me to get to my house, but I was able to get to my house. And I got in there and got what I could and canoed it out with some help. Now is it. Single mom, two kids who are here, kind of bounce around and out of coats. Um, it needs some gravel and it needs pilings <clears throat> and we need to decide what pilings we're using and how they're going to get in there so we can engineer them. Because the number of pilings and the kind of pilings are determined by the weight of the house and the soil. We want it stable. I was evacuated out of my home on Tuesday morning uh, during a flood evacuation and I spent not quite a week in Fairbanks and then jumped on the first available flight back and started ripping my home apart. So what kind of damage are you looking at? I had 30 inches of water in my home, um, the entire utility box underneath where my plumbing and my water heaters and things are was completely submerged and then uh, and then a 30 inch water line on the inside of the first floor. I painted, finished painting because I was remodeling my home. Literally was peeling the tape off the last wall, off the last paint job in my house as the water rose that weekend. So I get to start all over again. <laughs> this is how that crust system works. And you see how the, the roof assembly, the floor assembly, and the wall assemblies are all encapsulated with a high density urethane. The reason we went with urethane is a couple of reasons on this design. So one is the transportation of material. Urethane can be transported in barrels. It has a very high R value. It's hydrophobic, meaning if it gets wet, it doesn't absorb water. Typically, these houses have about the equivalent leakage of a silver dollar at 50 pascals, so they're really tight, meaning you put a plastic bag over your head, the air gets pretty bad. They have to be ventilated. With all the damage that's occurred on these houses, the ones that are being repaired and opened up and new sheetrock and those kinds of things, it's a very opportune time to improve energy efficiency, uh, do things right to lower those costs in the, in the winters ahead.